first time to say that. Yep, hang on. This is the filler bot. Today I'm going to talk about the filler bot and what you do is you plug it in and if you're in New Zealand you need a plug to go from this to that, obviously from here. Um, but other than that, once it's plugged in and switched on, you switch it on at the power and then you switch on the power. Um, you'll notice in the wiring diagram that these two buttons actually end up different than the video on the internet, but don't panic about that. Yep. Yep. Okay, I just had to pause then because Mr. Data wants to get involved. Um, so to set the um, temperature, you can see I've got it to set at 175 um, for ABS, which is slightly less than 185. And what I found was is that at 175, the um, filament tends not to bubble up as it comes out of the extruder. Yep. Um, and so you, you, you press set and then you go second button. Let's try that again. So you press set until the temperature comes up right, and then you go run, and see it flashes there, and then you move this button, which moves the cursor along to the temperature that you like, all the way to the end and back to the beginning if you want, and let's just say you want to move that one, and you go up one degree there, you can see it went up, you press set, set, and now it's set at that temperature and it'll just carry on going up to that temperature and you don't turn the extruder on until it gets right up to the temperature and once it hits 175 or 176 there then you switch your extruder on and then it should come out now if you run it too hot as I mentioned the stuff bubbles as it comes out and you'll see the little bubbles come up I recommend that the first batch you put through like the first handful um, the very first batch, you just chuck it away because there's little little flakes of metal from the inside of the, um, the guts of the unit that end up in the um, stuff. So the first, like, maybe even a couple of metres of the um, stuff that comes out, just get rid of that. Um, and then once you get past there, you should be right. As you can see, I've chucked in a few old little prints. Little prints like that, you know, you can just drop in and it will just chomp them up. But obviously, the smaller you can granulate it down the better it makes it easier for the machine you, you don't really want anything in there that's too difficult for it because you know easier the better and obviously the hotter you can run it without it bubbling the easier it is on the motor so um, that's what I recommend okay in the wiring there's a there's a bit of a trick which I got tricked with and it involves these, these two little parts here called jumpers and the jumpers relate to the terminal block here now I'll just see if I can see my cursor. Oh, hang on, I'll just use my finger. These two here, that jumper actually goes between that top two, and then there's another one on the bottom of the terminal block here and there, and it actually bridges between here and there. Now, you notice on the wiring diagram, let's try and hold it with one hand, I've tried to draw them in just there and there. So this wire from the AC in actually goes up here, jumps across, and goes to N on the power supply. So if you can see where that's going. And then that means that on the main power, this red wire comes down here and goes, jumps across there where you can see that I've drawn the other one, as I described a second ago, and goes all the way along and ends up in the relay number one. Now, and the wire's on the other side, because what I'd done is I thought that this um, wire actually went through here and out the other side there, and I never actually put in those um, jumpers, and that's why my machine wouldn't extrude or heat up, was because there wasn't anything in this diagram to indicate that those jumpers were meant to be on there, so that's that. Um, and if you turn your machine on with the side panel open, this little green LED should be lighting up. You can see here that I've got a little block of wood I've cut out and stuck in the back of here because this back plate is, is quite thin and when you plug the power plug in there it's it's just needed a bit more support so I just put a little block of wood and a screw in there just to give it some support. 
you can also see that I've used the thinner extruder um, bolt because it's slightly smaller than the other one and I found with my MakerBot, which is what I have, that it, um, it was just a better fit. The other, the other one is actually slightly too fat. And as a side note to that, um, even using the filler, fil uh, thinner filament, I actually heated this, heated the extruder up, um, and I stuck a pin in it while it was still in the machine, and actually give it a tap upwards, and just open it up just a fraction, just, just so that it flowed just that fraction bit easier, um, and inside. Um, up in here, I, I took out that little um, round bit with the little washers on it that presses up against the gear wheel, and I put, I think, three rubber rings on it, um, which just pressed a little bit harder because the filament... Um, you can have slight variations um, which can occur, like as it's coming out, sometimes when it's pouring onto the floor, you, you might bump it. Ouch, it's a bit warm. Um, and you know when it gets bumped or you knock it or something, sometimes it can it can stretch the filament a little bit or just s small imperfections can happen if you're mucking around next to it, and those imperfections can um, cause the extruder to have to try a little bit harder. And I've gone ahead and ordered the kit set and printed out these components, which are a little spring-loaded um, setup that goes on your extruder and presses against it with a roller bearing which apparently is a good thing. It makes the filament travel through a lot lot better. So um, I think that should be good. But I'm, I'm finding very very good reliability with the um, uh, filler bot um, filament anyway, so I'm not considering that to be really any problem. I think the spring and bolt set that goes with this extruder upgrade is like about $8 per side, so it's like 16 bucks. The shipping was, you know, uh, quite a bit more because I live at the other side of the planet. But... Um, it's quite cheap for the spring and the and the, and the little bearing that goes in that. I'll just set this back to um, wrong way. Press that one to move along, and then one to go down one, and then press set a couple of times. That seems to work. It flashes backwards and forwards, but that doesn't seem to uh, be a problem. I've read through the instructions on this particular unit, and there's all sorts of settings and stuff you can do with it. I'm pretty basic with it. I can just set my temperature and get going, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, as you can see here, the temperature has reached uh, 175, pretty much. And once it's heated up, then you click on your extruder, and it turns away in there. Um, and then you come and watch the filament come out. Just place to grab it. I've just got a little pole here just to make it clear the edge of the of the box because what happens is it just lands on there, the ends there, and just bunches up. So you just got to make sure it goes over the edge. Once it goes over the edge, it's away. And you just make sure that there's no bubbles. As I say, I mentioned that before about expanding out the end, and um, that's a beautiful thing. Um, I found the kit pretty good to put together. There's a little bit of filing and getting the main auger to fit into its little house, but um, I can handle a file, so that's no problem. And that'll turn away there happily. And then to shut it down, I switch the temperature off. And then I just run it for like, just like 10 seconds or so, just to let a bit of plastic go through, so it doesn't get cooked in the in the line. And it's probably starting to cool down a little bit now. And then I switch it off. I probably would recommend a an exhaust, uh, like a little vent thing above it. You know, there's a little bit of fumes because it is plastic, of course. And I'm I'm running ABS. So I'm pretty much sticking with ABS at this stage. Um, I did clog this up with trying to um, extrude some unknown plastic, which was not a good plan. But I just unbolted the um, the whole unit right out, and then just grabbed the inner guts with a pair of pliers, um, grabbed the plastic that was in there, put the temperature up, 
and then as it started to warm up, I just pulled the whole, pulled all the plastic out that was in there, and that came out no problem. Put the bolt back in and um, ran sweet. So all good. So all in all, I really like the filler bot. I think it's an excellent little machine. Um, awesome. Yep, great. Bye for now, and be well from Will and Mr. Data.